in order to subscribe to my channel please click here or click here please share comment and like my videos and channel hello guys welcome back to sas with service now this is part of service now four minutes video for developers and this is the next lesson of series of rest integration in service now in this lesson we will learn about create or update ServiceNow records with outbound REST response. You will learn how to create or update a record in ServiceNow with the response from outbound REST message. So in our last session, we learned about how to parse a REST response. Now in this session, we will focus and you will see a practical example that how exactly with that parsing of that record, that response, how exactly you can create or update any record in ServiceNow. As of now, the source is still our ServiceNow, another ServiceNow instance. However, this particular way can be utilized with any kind of response, JSON response you get from different systems. This is my personal developer instance. And this is the same primary instance. And this one is our secondary instance. Now, in our last session, we learned about how to parse JSON response. So if you remember, we basically, we were calling this REST message, which is basically hitting the secondary instance we have over here. And it is pulling uh, the records which were created in this particular table in last two hours. And if I go over here, it is basically parsing the response which I'm getting from that instance. And then it is also basically uh, doing the logging as well. So you can see it is printing uh, the output in the log. And as of now, you can see we are just uh, printing the asset tag, the asset tag which is coming in this response body. Now, as part of this video, I'm going to create or update records. That means I will be creating same asset in this instance as well. How will I do that? So let's go to here first. So you can see we have these two records which were already created, but I will create two new records. The reason behind it, because I already made a filter in my REST message for pulling uh, records for last two hours. But as of now, these were created long back. So that's the reason I will just click on this new button. I will create two hardware assets. Here I will select the model category. I can select maybe computer. And then I will select model. And here I can maybe select Asus A53. And I can put the asset tag as maybe computer one, two, three, four, five or maybe 001 and I'm going to just save it. So this is my first asset we created manually. And then if I go to all assets again, I will create another one and I will come over here, select the hardware. Here I will select computer and model. Maybe I can select any other model, maybe this one and I can give it as a tag as 002. That's it. So we have created two new asset records. So basically two assets are created in this instance. That is our secondary instance. Now, if I come over here, if I run this job again, it will definitely pull the data and it will do the logging, but we don't want logging. We want basically, we want to create similar records in our this instance as well. That means if I go to all assets table, so these are all asset records. Now, if you will see the difference, so here we have 2817 records. And if I come over here and I go to all assets, here you can see we have 2820. That means it has three extra records. Overall, we created, I think, four over here, but it is still, uh, I think, showing maybe one extra. That's okay. But overall, if I talk about the choices perspective, for example, this computer. 
This model category is already there. If I talk about the racket perspective, this model category we already selected in our secondary instance, it's already there in primary instance as well. And even, even if I talk about, uh, let's say, if I come over here, if you have this model, we have this model category. Even this model is available in our primary instance as well. So overall, you do not have to uh, think about the racket, whether that racket is available or not. But if I talk about any other third party integration, then you have to make sure specifically for uh, reference fields, because if you don't have that data, then you definitely have to populate it. Maybe you have to create it. It's something it's totally up to your uh, requirement that how you want to populate those data. But it's, it's I think if I if it's a mandatory field, then, then you have to definitely put that data before. So it's totally up to you how to handle how you exactly handle it. So uh, as of now, what I will do, so I'm just treating it as that I, I do have these same uh, uh, reference rackets which I selected over here. These are already there in this primary instance as well. So I don't have to worry about uh, the naming convention because I can just directly populate the name and then it should be populated automatically. So if I come over here, even even society, I think society won't match, but I think we can populate it with the name. That is something we, we might try. So in order to create it, what I can do, let me make it full screen and make it a little bit big so that you can see the script. Now, what I will do, I will make it comment because I don't want to use this logging for now. What I will do, I will start with where gr equal to new glide record and here because we I have to create a record basically so in that case I will just copy this table and that is ALM asset overall that's a name of the table so I can just put over here semicolon and I can do gr dot initialize that's how you create a new record then I'm initializing over here. Now here you have to basically uh, update the field values. You have to populate the field values. Uh, you and you and where exactly you'll get those values to to be populated from your JSON response. So in that case, I will do gr dot. So let's say we have, or maybe let's open one racket. So if I open this one, so I have this display name. So I just see display name and I come over here I will just put display underscore name and if I do gr dot I can not gr dot I just have to do like this copy this come over here now as of now we were printing this asset tag but I don't have to do that here it's a display name so I just need to do display underscore name that means it will populate the display name from the response body and for for one racket and overall we are already iterating it so you can see we are already basically looping the value so it will it is running the for loop for every every racket it will loop in the json body and print it over here so if i do for example let me do model this time and if i come over here and i copy this we have model And we have model category so in that case if I do model and model category let's copy this one put it over here I can do model semicolon and I can also do model underscore category and I can just paste like this and if I come over here, model underscore category, or maybe I can just copy from here, because overall field names are same. But if you're integrating with any third party application, then you definitely have to put uh, those field fields basically over here. So then I can put asset tag. So I do asset tag equal to and I can use the same one which we already printed last time so I will just do semicolon and now 
you can just mention insert that's it now this will create a new racket basically two rackets depend on the kind of responses you get because we created two rackets so it will and it will only fetch two rackets because it it, cre it got created in the last two hours so and it will basically loop over here as part of the length we have in json response and then it will create racket for each each racket we have in response body so in that case i will just save it so it is saved and overall it should basically create the rackets if I come over here what I have done basically I'm I'm matching the values so I'm putting the same value which which is which basically I'm getting from this response body so I have initialize insert I think we should be good so I can just click on execute now if I do that let's see it is done I have executed it and you can see here the racket is created computer 002 and computer 001 that's what we created over here so this is our primary instance and you can see our record is created and if I go to display name so you can see display name is also over here and even the asset tag what exactly basically value is missing now the value we are missing for model category and model the reason behind it we might be getting i think uh society if i if i'm not wrong we might we might be getting society from this particular instance this this one that's the reason uh, it is it is not able to populate it now for that you have to make sure that you are getting uh, the name maybe because society won't be same that's that's some one thing you have to remember so maybe you have to populate it uh, with the name that is something you can do so maybe for example and i'm sure this is this is a reference field or maybe if i come over here and maybe i'll just do like this configure dictionary let's see if it's a choice field or uh, it's a reference field so i think we can use the name as well that is that is still i would say uh, fine so it will automatically populate it but this time because i think we are getting uh, maybe maybe uh, let, let's check quickly i think we can check it let's go back let's go back to our script here and we can print the logs again so if i remove this comment and I click on save now you will see that that it will create the records again so if I click on execute now you will see that it will create same records again you can see now how can you save this duplication so there are different ways you can save this duplication so maybe in, in the same script, this scheduled job, which you have written that script execution, which you are doing, you can just mention, maybe you can do a check in this table first, whether same name asset is available or not. Mostly asset tag will always be different. So maybe you can check asset tag. If same asset tag is available, rather than creation, you can do the updation. That's what you can do with the help of this, this rest message. Now, if I, if I come over here, so if we have this uh, four rackets and I come over here, so we had this log enabled and I can just quickly go to logs to check whether what kind of data I'm getting. So I come over here and I will just sort it. So yeah, you can see. So if you will search, if you will search for, for example, you search for, mm, model let's see what exactly we have so if i search for model you can see the model category is in basically link the link is there and there is sys id the value is basically sys id and that's the reason the reason behind it because we don't have same society if you will have the same society then definitely it would have populated the value but if it's a different society then it won't populate the value 
in order in order, then in rather than society you have to basically fetch name not not uh, not the society you have to basically fetch the name of that particular model or model category but overall as you can see over here that i have been able to create the records this is how you can create or update the records but here you can see i have created four records as i mentioned you can still go over here and in here maybe you can do a quick check first so you can do the glide record and you can check whether the same asset tag is available or not if it's available then you, you just do need to do update if it's not available then it can go to initialize part again that means this you can write this in the else part and it will create the record and if it's not then you can just do gr dot update that's it same record if it matches the asset tag update the same same record that's how you can create or update record when you get the response from a third party system as part of the json response you can just create or update records in service now